Hi, my name is Zach Varda. This week on The Student Slant, we talked to Alicia Graves about her article in The Lantern on African-American male enrollment. So my first year here, one of my floor mates in my dorm had made a comment about how there were only 119 African-American men in our class. And I just thought it was the craziest thing. The number just seemed so low. And that kind of just stuck with me. And then as I was in my classes and these big lectures of, I had a lecture one time of at least 300 students. And you look around and then you're like, wait, I don't really see that many African-American men. So she might be right. And um I just never knew if there was a way to actually check that number. Um, just as a regular student, I hadn't known that I would be taking enterprise reporting um, so as a class. So it was just something that I never looked that deep into. But it was always something in the back of my mind. And you just notice as you walk around campus. And then the second I realized that I would be taking enterprise reporting and knew that it would be a class that we would do an investigative story that I knew immediately that's what I wanted to do. Um, that's the story that I wanted to look into when I learned about more about public records and um, how we can obtain just this information from the university and it's we can get it pretty easily that I was like, this is the story I want to do and I want to know if this is true or not. And come to find out her numbers weren't far off from what I found. I'm Alicia Graves. I am the assistant sports director at Lantern TV, and I am also currently the women's lacrosse beat writer for The Lantern, and I am a third-year journalism student. I'm Jake Ray. I'm Zach Varda, and this is a Student Slant. So this is a really long story, and it, and it takes up most of the episode the issue of the lantern. Uh, it's huge in scope. It's a topic that is extremely important. So I'm just kind of wondering your experiences of tackling a story that is this big in scope. You said you told us before that it took you 20 weeks. So I'm just kind of wondering what it's like going through that grind of reporting on a story that takes this long to get out. Well, originally, since I was writing this story for a class. I had a 16-week period to finish a story, which was a little nerve-wracking because I had, I didn't know where to start. Um, I knew I needed to start with enrollment numbers, so I just went on the enrollment services website, um, and then I found that they were able, there was a sheet on that website that I could file requests for exactly what I was looking for because all the enrollment records and everything that's already on their website had didn't have the breakdown that I needed of African American men specifically by each enrollment class. So that was something that I had to request from them. And um, that took a couple weeks to get. And I also wanted the number of African American male athletes. And I didn't, that was hard for me. Um, because I didn't know where to start. I didn't know if I should go to the athletic department, if they had that information. That's obviously something that they don't put in the enrollment report. And then when I was looking, I found that the NCAA actually has the number of African-American men in the Big Ten. They have it broken down by conference. So I was like, oh, let me just request it from the NCAA because Ohio State has to file something to them to obtain that inf- that type of information if they can get it from every school in the Big Ten. Um, and when I, I didn't know who to reach out from the, uh, the NCAA, and when I did, they were like, we can't give you this information. I don't – they didn't really know where they, like, obtained it. I don't know. So they are like, you're going to have to go back to your university. And that was maybe during week six into the semester. So I was really coming down to when I really need to start interviewing people. And I didn't know who I wanted to interview until I got all my data. Um, And finally, I was able to go through uh, Ben Johnson. He had those numbers for me, but he could only give them to me for a specific year, which was the 2016-2017 academic year. And so that was the hardest part is waiting on those 
people to get back to you because sometimes those things can take two to three weeks and I'm only working in a 16 week period. So while I was waiting on those things as well, I was going through my mind of who I wanted to interview. And also with that, you know, especially people that work for the university, they have busy schedules. So trying to find time where I can sit down. Um, A lot of my interviews were over an hour because you really want, this is such a big topic that you really want to get down to every little piece of it and make sure you ask all the questions you need to because you don't know if you're going to be able to sit down with them again. And so it was, that was all hard to tag on itself because I was working under a time constraint. Um, And then when I found out that they wanted it, wanted to publish it, the biggest thing at that point for me was like, okay, if this is going to come out in the paper and all these people, I know the audience that The Lantern has. And when big stories like this come out, how, how many people can see these things? I was like, this has to be perfect. My numbers have to be right. I need to talk to all the right people. I need to make sure any, everybody's voice was heard and that everybody got a chance to say their side, whether it be the university or students, faculty, staff, whoever it may be. Um, I wanted to have everybody included in there because things like this can easily um, get a lot of backlash. So that was the hardest thing to tackle is knowing something, especially something that concerns race. Anytime you bring up the topic of race, there's always going to be some something that people are either uncomfortable with, upset about. There's just a lot of opinions that come with that. That's a really touchy subject for a lot of people, especially in today's soci- uh, society. So that was, I think, the biggest thing to tackle for me is like this needs to be done well and it needs to be done right. Yeah, kind of curious about how you you made a lot of records requests from Ohio State. And like you said, this is a hard topic to cover. And it's really not a great image for Ohio State. And it's not good news for them. But you're working with them so closely for the data. And they're helping you out. So how did they kind of react to this article coming out? Or if they have reacted at all? or And how did they, um, I guess, handle your data requests knowing that this story may not look good on them PR-wise? The biggest thing for me from the beginning is that well originally when I was um, asking for these numbers and all the information it was for a class Mm -hmm. so I had to make it clear that this was going to be for a class but I let them know that it was COM 4221 Enterprise Reporting and that it was taught by Spencer Hunt who is the advisor for the Lantern so Mm -hmm. it always has the ability to be published so I made that very clear to them but when I I presented it as my story is going to be about the low enrollment of African-American men. And they knew that from the beginning. I didn't say, can I just have the Mm -hmm. um, numbers of African-American men in each class and not tell them what I'm going to do with it? Mm -hmm. I was saying, I plan on working on a story of the number of African-American men. And some of the things that I'm looking for, I wasn't able to find in the enrollment reports that the university puts out on their website. And so that was the first thing. I got um, a lot of the other numbers just as undergraduate enrollment as a whole and things like that. That's all on the enrollment services website. So I was able to obtain that myself. And the athlete data, like I said, I had to request that. Finally, when I got all those numbers and and I was able to put them all together, I did the math and did the percentages and everything, and I sent them to it. Uh, sent my information to them. I said, this is the data I have. Can you look over it? I did have mistakes the first couple of times and things I overlooked and my some of my calculations were off. Um, and that was something that I needed to go back. There's just missing pieces. I was missing. Um, it didn't go through my mind that enrollment is one thing, but pe- uh, students can transfer over. And that was something that I found once I had sent this to the university. So once the university, I think I sent those numbers back and they were looking over them and you can see the numbers yourself, I don't think they were going to have a good reaction. Mm. I think they knew what was going on. And obviously I, was, I made it clear that it was low enrollment. So it wasn't that they reacted in a bad way. It was more they were concerned, okay, if you're going to pursue this story, we want to know that these numbers are right. And so that was their biggest thing. And they corrected me where I messed up. And 
right a couple weeks ago when I knew that it was coming to the time that we we're getting to publish it, I sent it back to them even about two months later. And I said, can you look over these one more time? Especially because some of the people that I interviewed had questions about some of my numbers. And they said that at first they didn't think those were the right numbers as well. So I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm writing something that doesn't necessarily make the university look good. So I need them to clarify these numbers for me themselves. And they did. So what we came up, what our final numbers were, they approved. And then when I think when they knew it was coming out and we were reaching out to them more saying, we're going to be publishing this on Tuesday, they were alert. And mm-hmm. I, they knew it was coming. And yeah. they, they even just the day before wanted to check one more time <laughs> to make sure everything was okay. So we haven't got had any negative um, reactions from them, but I think they were concerned. Mm-hmm. A really interesting paradigm that you brought up in the article was that when people see black males on campus, they think, oh, that's probably an athlete. And I thought it was interesting. Everybody knows, like, if you're writing an article, your sources are really important. And you end up using Paris, who I know from being in the journalism program, who is not only a black athlete, but an athlete in a sport where most of the athletes are white. So I'm wondering how valuable his perspective was, as well as how you settled on him being the voice that you wanted to use for athletes in this article. Yeah. When I was writing this story and I was trying to think of my student voice and I I, someone questioned me about you're you're talking about this stereotype and you decided to use the athlete, um, an African-American athlete, even though you're talking about when uh, you walk around and you do see an African-American man, you think he's an athlete. And once I sat down with Paris and I heard what he said, I knew I wanted him to be the voice because, and someone joked about this saying he puts the student back in student athlete because that's exactly what he did with this in this story and the things he said. He made it very clear that I'm more concerned with my education and that will always come first to me. And I am more than what my body is capable of. I know he said he says something like that in the story. And I wanted to use that because it's showing people that these athletes themselves, they're aware of the situation and um, they want to show that they're they are more than athletes, that they're students here. And I think one of the biggest things that just came to mind, too, is when you come to Ohio State, it's not that you can just come here and fail all your classes and just not do anything. These, the, Although they're athletes, they have to maintain a certain GPA to remain on their teams, and they still have to be students as well. And I think a lot of the things that Paris had said and the points he made were so powerful that I just knew that he kind of was that student perspective because he showed that I'm a student athlete as well and that just my uh, my knowledge can is greater than my athletic ability and you know there was other students that I had in mind that I wanted to interview but after uh, Paris was the one of the first people that I spoke to and when I was writing the story I just thought the things he said were so powerful that I didn't necessarily need that other voice well, I have two questions. So one, how does it feel to write a story that's so long and that also kind of unmasks a topic that most people, I guess, wouldn't be typically aware of um, in terms of like knowing the numbers exactly? And then how do you see Ohio State reacting to this coming going forward into the future? Did, what was the first question? Yeah. Just... The, uh, how does it feel to just write such a like, – such a, a, like uncovering piece I guess that typically people wouldn't see these numbers or know these numbers exactly because even like their undergraduate website doesn't know them so honestly after all this I do feel very accomplished because um they're going with stories like these that are really long these kind of um enterprise reporting that's what Spencer Hunt likes to call he doesn't like the investigative reporting even though it's a more investigative story um there's I guess I broke it down into three different aspects. It was the, I need the numbers, I need to do the math. Um, I need to figure out what the story is after that. Because coming into the story, I had a, my original story was going to have 
focus more on sports. And because my perception was that if this these numbers are so low, then most of these are students are athletes. Mm. Um, and then when I got the athlete data back, I was like, for one of the years, it was only 9.2%. So I was like, that story doesn't work. So we need to shift the focus. So it was fi- finding what the story was after that. And then when I really sat down and looked at it, it was that there seems to be a low enrollment just of African-American men in general. Mm-hmm. And then after f- you know what your story is, it's finding those sources, interviewing those sources. So writing a long story like this, I didn't even know where to start. Um and coming up with that lead where I just first started off with how many black men do you see, that came to me when I was interviewing uh, Keith Bell, who's in the story. And he, that I use his quote right after of, I was seeing one, two, three, you mm-hmm. know. And that's when it came to me because I did not know how I was going to start off this story. I thought I was just going to start presenting numbers. And then we're like, not with this type of piece where... It has the impact to be powerful and make a statement. Um, We needed something different to capture people's attention. So it was uh, hard to figure out, like, how we were going to frame this and what was the best way to go about it. And then we kind of broke it down into the barriers that people were speaking about and um, the stereotypes and Mm. then what the university has been trying to do with this issue. So. It was, it was difficult. It's not easy writing these stories. It takes a lot of rewriting. Mm-hmm. I re- rewrote my story so many times because um, when you're doing stories like these, uh, like this, as just you know, more of a powerful piece, you want it to come off the right way. So, you know, I do feel very accomplished finishing it, just in the sense that I was able to gather. a bunch of numbers that people aren't able to see because even though uh, my friend she told me 119 it was only a she wasn't far off it was 121 Mm -hmm. but we want to know those the exact numbers not generalizing Mm -hmm. because a lot of people said uh tweeted back at me um like i always thought this was an issue but no one Mm -hmm. knew so that's the other thing it feels good it's knowing that so many people actually wanted to know about this topic and now they know because of my story and they they can look at the data and they can look at those numbers. And then what was your following question? Well, first off, I want to say, though, the the lead and everything was – the story's great, by the way. So also I'm kind of curious how you feel like Ohio State's going to go forward in not – I know previously I asked reacting to the article. But how do you feel like they're going to make a change to actually bring these numbers up? I think they're just not to say that they weren't conscious before, because if you if you read my story and I wanted to give the university the opportunity to speak for mm-hmm. themselves. And um, when President Drake, he had a few um, things to say about the issue. He actually came and spoke to the Lantern and just his regular semester mm-hmm. interview that he does with the Lantern. Um, and. I'm not quite sure. I didn't sit in on the interview, but I know I planned some questions that they were going to ask him. And those are the things that we include in the story because we really wanted his voice. Mm -hmm. And Ben Johnson also spoke in the story. And I know going into that interview, he wasn't he wasn't aware that this story was even a thing. Obviously, President Drake, he's not easy Mm -hmm. to speak to. Um, But Ben Johnson was. But it's I don't think they weren't conscious before because they've tried to make efforts and i've li- i listed a couple of them but the todd bell center um for african-american men they do not necessarily they're not involved with the enrollment process and they're involved when um african-american men do um enroll to the university they work with them while they're in the university so but they have other programs i know for High school students that mention they allow them to come Mm. see the university and just other things that they're doing. But I think what they've seen, I think what they've seen now with this story and seeing um, the people that I spoke to and some of the things they said is that they might change their approach. And I think that's how they're going to respond to it. 
one of the things uh, President Drake said was this it's not it's something that is always an mm-hmm. issue that it's hard work to do something like this. And I think they might change their approach because when you look at the numbers, the undergraduate population keeps on and growing every year. So although the enrollment of African-American men increased each year, the percentage was not changing. It stayed at two per, uh, mm-hmm. 2.6% every single year. So I think that seeing that, because it's not like the university sitting down every day, like, let's look at all these numbers and look at these percentages. You know, they have different roles and things that they have to attend to. So now seeing it, they may say, OK, we might need to take a different approach, mm-hmm. you know, and change some of the things that we're doing to help. Because it might look you look at just the enrollment of African-American men, you're going to be like, it's increasing. It's increasing every year. But you have to look at those percentages. The percentage hasn't changed for the last four years at all. Thanks for listening. Join us next week on the Student Slant for more student perspective.